to the future of citizen development is now. Uh, my name is Koen van Beek, manager of products marketing at Mendix, and I'm joined by Arjan Hendricks, product manager of Mendix Studio, also at Mendix. Uh, together with Arjan, um, we've really traveled all over the world to uh, visit our customers and other folks in the community to see what they're doing on the topic of citizen development. Um, and we'd like to share some of the things we've learned today. And later on, um, Arjan will show you the latest and greatest of the new features in Mendix Studio to make it even better. So let's dive right in. So one of the favorite pieces of research that I've read last year um, was titled, The Future of Apps Must Include Citizen Development. It was a piece by Gartner, and I got really excited in reading it for two real reasons. One, it's an interesting trend, but two, I thought the future was already here. It was already among us. And it really reminded me of this quote, the future is already here, it's just not very evenly distributed. And that an evenly distributed future um, took a very physical shape in my mind. And that physical shape was Mendix World last year, um, where the community came together, a community of 135,000 makers with very different backgrounds. We've got people that are program managers, we've got people that are software engineers, we've got people that are analysts, lawyers, behavioral economists. There are so many different backgrounds that come together in our community and all of them work together to go build a bunch of software. That is exactly the future that Gartner was describing and it's already here. So let me walk you through an example of what life looks like in that benevolently distributed future. So imagine I'm someone without any coding skills, but I've got a great idea for an application. In Mendix, I can just go grab a template as a starting point. I can download it and I can open it in Mendix Studio and I can get going. I can use the visual modeling tools that are available to build logic, user interfaces, data models. I can find data from Data Hub. There's a lot of things I can do without writing a single line of code. And after I spent maybe an hour or two tinkering around with my app, I'm really happy with it and I'm ready to deploy it. Now, other folks in the organization mostly in the IT department, we'd like to have some visibility in all of the applications that go live in order to make sure that there's no shadow IT in the organization. And in Mendix, that's really easy. They can just view all of the applications that are going to be deployed and they can have a QA testing process around it. So everyone, uh, every important stakeholder is aware of the application and everyone is happy. So it can go on and you can deploy it on the Mendix cloud. Now, one interesting thing is that this is not really the end of the application. It never really is. Usually, you'd like to build some additional enhancements. So in Mendix, um, the citizen developer opens it up again in Mendix Studio and tries to add some additional feature functionality. But to be really honest, there is still a limit to the types of applications and the types of functionality that a citizen developer can build using Mendix Studio. And the um, instead of having the citizen dev run into a brick wall, and that's the end of it, she can actually reach out to a colleague um, using Buzz and some of the communication tools that we have in the platform. You can reach out to a colleague and ask for help. A professional developer can open that same application, that same project in a different IDE in Mendix Studio Pro, which is a little more complex, but a lot more powerful. So the professional developer builds out some of the backend logic while well, the citizen developer continues to refine the user experience somewhat. And at the end, it comes together and it's merged back into a single project and a single application. Maybe the citizen dev makes a couple of tweaks and there we have it. We have a 2.0 version of the app. It goes through the same testing and the same QA process. IT is still aware that something happened on the type of application. And you know what? They found out that because of some data they are now looking to use, IT would really rather have this app be deployed in a more secure environment. And um, that's possible. That same application that was running on the Mendix Cloud can be taken off of the Mendix Cloud and it can be deployed to Azure um, with very little effort whatsoever. So at the end, we've got an application that was started by a citizen dev, someone that has no coding experience whatsoever. It was enhanced by a professional developer. And all of the, um, the full ALM of this has been inside of the IT organization, and based on what they've learned, they decided to deploy that application somewhere else. Now, this is one example of what this looks like, but in a Mendix customer, this is actually helping, uh, happening all over the place. 
and you have many different teams building many different applications, sort of different configurations of makers, all at the same time. So this is really the power of citizen development in our eyes. It's not just someone without coding skills building a simple app. It is getting people with different backgrounds together and enabling them to build anything they like. So what does that look like from a tool's perspective? Um, this is all possible because of our dual IDE approach. We've got Mendix Studio on the one hand, and we've got Mendix Studio Pro on the other. And so they are not separate, but they are linked together by a common Mendix platform and a common Mendix project. So if someone starts something in Studio Pro, and an environment that's very friendly to people without any coding experience whatsoever, someone that has more technical expertise can actually take that app, finish it, sync it back, and so on and so forth. So now to join us and to tell uh, us a little bit more about what we're doing with Mendix Studio and where it's going, I'd like to introduce Ariane Hendrickson. We've been together on a lot of planes, trains, and automobiles to visit the community wherever they are. And um, I'm very eager to hear what he has to say about where we're taking the product. So thanks, Kuhn. Um, yeah, so in the last year, year and a half, Kuhn and I met many citizen developers and IT leaders at our customers. And we've seen great examples of people building applications to support their daily work. For example, I met someone who built an application to remove several days of manual work every month. And someone else decided to build an application prototype as a tangible business case instead of writing a document. And based on all these experiences, we've enhanced Medic Studio with great features, things like filtering and sorting, user roles and security, and enhanced uh, layouting in pages. Uh, but we didn't stop there with Mendix Studio. Mendix Studio is about to get even better. And I'm going to show you these four pillars and demo how that works in Studio. So the first part is uh, build visually your own app. Because citizen developers often think and talk in visual images over written documents. And that's what you see here in Mendix Studio. So let me show you. As you can see here, you have Mendix Studio, and I've, o I've created the budget overview page with uh, two lists, an OPEX list and a CAPEX uh, list. And on the right, you see a summary with my total budget and a total spend. And this is all visual, so you can build your data, your logic, and also your pages visually. So let's enhance this with some nice widgets. What I would like to do is add a progress bar just below the budget to show if, if the budget, uh, the total spent already exceeds the budget. So I'm going to select the total spent against the budget. So this looks qu uh, quite nice. Let's also do a bit on the styling. So I'm going to select the su success uh, styling, which makes it nicely green. Next to the widgets, we also have a lot of building blocks provided by Mendix, but you could also, as a company, provide your own building blocks in your own styling and your own formatting, so that you can add new capabilities in the style you want. So for example, I'd like to have a button that says, okay, amend this budget, and a button that says new bu budget. So this is the way you can visually build your application. That brings me to the second one, and that is enterprise data, because applications often have a combination of local data meshed up with enterprise data. And enterprise data integration is hard, right? You, know, we, you have to know where can I find the data, who's the owner of the data, and by the way, is there an IT team available to integrate that data? I'll show you how Mendix Data Hub integration in Studio makes that super easy in one click. Let me introduce to you Nora. Nora is an office manager at a company, and Nora's company recently uh, decided to uh, formalize the work from home process because during the COVID-19 outbreak, they did a little pilot with it and it was successful. Um, and Nora doesn't want to get swamped by all kinds of emails from, new uh, from employees who want to um, order new uh, equipment, L things like chairs and desks and peripherals. So Nora decided to build an form for their employees. So let me show you. As you can see here, she built a form for every employee 
where she shows the name of the employee, the, the equi type of equipment she wants to select, and an optional note. But the equipment is, is already available in an office equipment service in the, in the enterprise, and she doesn't want to duplicate that information because the moment she does an export from that, from that enterprise system, it is already outdated. She always wants to have the up-to-date information. So what you can do is select this equipment drop-down, and the selector t shows all the in-project information, but also the tab with the data hub integration. And here you see all the services that have been made available in your company. In the case of Nora, you can see m an office equipment service, CRM, and all kinds of other uh, things. And she sees that the equipment is part of the office equipment service. She selects the name, and the moment you press select, the whole integration is done in the background. It's fully secured, it's fully transparent. The moment she publishes this app, the, the owner of the service will see that this application is also using uh, their service. So it's fully transparent and secured. Let's see how this looks like in a preview. So let's preview this one. As you can see, here you have a preview of the application form. And when I click on an equipment, I see the live version of all the equipment available. I'm selecting a custom office chair, adding a note, and submit the request. This is probably a request from Kuhn. Kuhn is two meters long, so he, uh, he could use a, b a bit of an, uh, 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 a chair like this. So this is how you work. That brings us to the, n the, the next step, and it is workflow. Because Nora doesn't want to get swamped by hundreds and hundreds of, free, uh, of these uh, uh, requests every day. She wants to have a process around it. And many applications in your enterprise require process. So that brings us to the third element, and it is workflow integration in Manic Studio. Nora built this workflow to support her uh, process. So what you see here is an office equipment uh, request that has been submitted. The moment it is submitted, there is an automated check if it is a custom or a standard item. Standard items, Nora uh, doesn't want to approve those. Those, those can be shipped right away. So what you see here is a shipping task is created when it is a standard item. Um, and there is a, a page attached to this one, so let me open this, uh, this page. Out of the box, you get all kinds of uh, workflow capabilities uh, in Studio, and one of these are user task uh, pages. For example, you can here assign uh, your task to yourself, you see an activity line, uh, attachments can be added, and comments, all out of the box. But here in the middle mo part, you have uh, shipping specific information, and Nora added equipment and a vendor and an SQU um, information to be sure that you have the uh, right uh, element from the um, from the warehouse, and of course the shipping information from the employee. Let's go back to the workflow. The moment it is a custom item, you see that she decided to have an approval task in between. The approval task is to see whether the employee is, uh, uh, if, if, the ta uh, if the element can be approved by the employee, or if she should send a declination email. In this case, uh, when it is approved, the shipping can be done. So let's see how this works in Studio. I'm going to preview again. And as you can see, we just s uh, tried to fill in uh, a request, and the request has been, uh, that was a custom request, and it has been added as a task for Nora to approve. What you see here is an out-of-the-box task inbox that is prov provided by Mendix, uh, so that you can easily start building workflow not having to think of all these uh, things that come out, to out of the box. So I'm going to click on the task, and what you see here is all the information for Nora to make a decision whether this one should be approved or not. In this case, she sees, okay, this is a custom chair. Let me add a note here. Uh, please uh, ship the XSL version, because Nora knows that that is the one for people uh, of two meters long. And now she can approve it, and what you see here is that the approval request is done and automatically the shipping uh, task has been created. So that means that at the end of the day, 
the person who is uh, going to ship all the uh, equipment can pick this list and uh, open them one by one, assign it to themselves, print a shipping label, put it on the package and ship it. And that's the moment the workflow is done. So this is how it works. So what have you seen so far? First, Mendix Studio is for citizen developers and it provides you a visual, uh, a visual way to build your application, your data, your logic and your pages. Secondly, applications are often a combination of local and enterprise data. Therefore, we have an integration with Mendix Studio, uh, with Mendix Data Hub in Mendix Studio, where you can one discover and one click integrate. The third thing is Mendix um, Studio contains workflow where you can automate your processes or your process from your department. This is to the fourth element, and that is collaboration. And collaboration in Mendix uh, is about two parts, technology and people. And I'm not going to talk about the technology part because technology in Mendix is boring. It just works. Studio and Studio Pro work seamlessly together. I'd like to focus on the people part. And therefore, I'm going to ask uh, Kuhn to uh, elaborate a bit more on a specific customer, the Dutch Railways. Kuhn, what can you le learn us about the Dutch Railways? Well, thank you, Arjan, and thank you for the demo, too. Um, one of the most interesting customers that Arjan and I visited in the last 12 months was the Dutch National Railway, or RNS if you're Dutch. Uh, they're one of the largest train operators in the world, and as a result, they've got a rather complex and large maintenance division. Within that division, there were many uh, processes that were not digitized at all, or they were digitized using something like a spreadsheet. And that is just not an optimal way of working. So one of the employees within the maintenance division, Sebastian, took it upon himself to uh, build a little application to replace a paper form. And as a result, life for a lot of people on that shop floor became a lot easier. Now, DNS is a regulated organization, so it was a little difficult for him to build the entire application. But with the help of his colleague, Summit, a professional developer, he was able to make it work. Now, you can learn more about their story in an interview uh, or in the session that they did at Mendix World that will be linked below this one. Now, to wrap up, thank you all for joining. And I will end up with the quote that we used to start this session. The future is already here. It's just not very evenly distributed. And you are all a part of it. Thanks for joining.